had to go into work today so I have this slower morning of being by myself. So before we jump into Bible study, I need to prepare a few things in my morning routine. Let's get ready for the day and jump right in. Make the bed, make it nice. The reason why one of the first things I always do is get ready before I'm about to do something productive or requires more of my brain is because if I stay in my PJs and I stay in bed, then I tend to just kind of want to lounge, scroll through my phone. So to avoid that, I just get right out of bed, make my bed so I don't go back into it, then I change. I have been trying some new products in my morning and night routines and one of them is Mix Soon. So I got this from being influenced on TikTok because I saw it everywhere. They got me. I've been trying the Mix Soon Bean Essence for over a month now and I feel like it's a very hydrating serum. And then they actually reached out and wanted to partner with me so I was like, yes! I love Korean skincare. If you're trying to achieve Korean glass skin like I am, then you need to try the three layer essences from Mix Soon. First, I use Centella Asiatica, which helps with soothing and combats acne. Then, we use the Galactomyces Ferment, which helps with the glow and the moisture. Then, we use the Bifida Ferment, which also helps your skin barrier and helps soften your skin. And all of Mix Soon's products are made in Korea, Gangnam to be exact. And they have this cute little bear holding a Centella leaf. So, you want to give each toner a little bit of time to dry and really set into your skin and oh my goodness the combination of all three literally locks in all the moisture and makes my skin feel like a baby's butt and my skin feels so chuk chuk ke chuk chuk means like very dewy moisturized whenever i use all three my face feels so soft that i even put it on my hands <laughs> I am done. I literally do this morning and night. See that your skin is really going to brighten up and glow. My skin always just feels so soft after doing all three. My hands too. It takes extra work. Oh my goodness. I wish you could feel my hands and my face right now. So make sure to click my link below and check out Mix soon. Usually I like to have my quiet time be one of the first things I do in the morning after I get ready. But because I just have so much to do today, I want to minimize my distractions. One of my biggest distractions is being hungry. So I'm going to make a smoothie so that I can drink it while I do my Bible study. So when it comes to spending time with God, it's truly like what a privilege it is that we even get to. Half the world population cannot practice freedom of religion. And many Christians would be killed just because they're going to church and just because they have a Bible. You know, on my channel, people are very positive. They're very sweet in the comment section. But I think the most negative thing I've received is for being a Christian. But they're not targeted towards me. It's truly targeted towards Christians in general or bashing on the idea of believing in God. But at the end of the day, that doesn't change what I believe because I am 100% without a doubt or certain that God exists. He has shown himself multiple times in my life in situations where I thought I was going to die and I didn't. There's nothing anyone could ever say to me to make me doubt that. And I know that there's some people in their walks where maybe that's not true. And I know that because I used to be like that. There was a time in college where I really doubted everything and that is a great wake up call to figure out you know what do you actually believe and what is true so when it comes to not feeling like spending time with god i think we need to reevaluate our lives and figure out do you see this pattern in other areas of your life do you also not feel like eating healthy do you also not feel like working out or studying it overall it could be a discipline issue but i think reframing our mindset of what a joy it is that we even get to and i think if you're watching this video you've already taken that step of you have the desire to spend time 
connection with God and to read about his word. So A plus for you. I really encourage you to try anything, listening to sermons or reading books. So I'm also part of multiple small groups at my church. One, I am with some newly married ladies and we're reading through The Excellent Wife. I'm also part of another women's Bible study and we are reading Peacemakers. And for my own personal reading, I have been reading Trusting God and this book is so good. This is a great book too. I always say start off with prayer. Before you read or before you do anything, pray and talk to God. And it doesn't have to be some like holier than thou prayer, but truly talk to God. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity to just share about your word and to also just model and show what it's like to truly be thankful and grateful for your word. Because of you and what you've done on the cross, we are able to have a relationship with you that is free of shame, free of judgment, and um, all because you placed it on your son, Jesus Christ. So we thank you, Lord, for sending him and for allowing us to be in relationship with you and to have the gift of faith to believe in the words that you have said are true. Father, please forgive us for even the actions that we're not aware of and for the, the sin in our lives that can so easily separate us and make us feel ashamed to even come near you. We are so thankful, God, that you are so loving and so forgiving that all we have to do is just come to you. Father, please give us that rest and that peace that we desire so earnestly in this chaotic world. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. We are going to go through one of my favorite books and I'm going to walk you through how I read. And this is actually modeled after what my current church does and I've just been learning so much. One of my favorite pens is this Acro Ball and then I have my No Bleed Highlighter which is perfect for Bibles. I'll make sure to link everything below. And I also have my study Bible here. We're going to read through James 1. You can see that the Bible is kind of broken up into different paragraphs. You want to be mindful of that. We really chew on different sections because there's so so much to take in and don't feel like you're just rushing through and reading it for the sake of reading. I'm going to read through it once, ask some questions that we should be thinking about and then answer those questions with you. I'm reading from the ESV version and then I think my iPad might be a little bit different but that's okay. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes in the dispersion, greetings, testing of your faith. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He he is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation, and the rich in his humiliation, because like a flower of the grass he will pass away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat, and withers the grass. Its flowers fall, and its beauty perishes. So also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Number one, what is the main point of the author in this passage? Number two, how does the passage connect to the gospel? Number three, what are some theological insights in this passage? And number four, what application can we make? And we always want to think about ourselves last. When I was younger, it was easy to be like, how does this apply to me right now? But we really just want to focus on, okay, what is the Lord saying in this? So first, I would say the overall theme or the purpose of this passage is for James to remind us that we will all go through difficult times, especially for our faith. But when we go through trials, we are actually blessed. So why is that? Let's dive in. Okay, so James, a servant of God. So servant. When we think about servants, servants are actually very humble. They never ask why they have to do something. They do it. So James is calling himself a servant of God. We live in a society where we don't want 
to serve anybody but actually we will always be slaves to something whether it is money or how we look or our weight or people's approval so wouldn't we rather be a servant of the lord and is good than being a servant to anything else that this world has to offer that is temporary he is a servant of god and of the lord jesus christ and it's just a greeting hello <laughs> consider it pure joy my brothers and sisters whenever you face trials of many kinds consider so because he says consider that means you could also not consider because if i tell you oh have you considered going to this school that means you could also not consider going to that school right so he's saying consider it pure joy so a lot of people may not see it as pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds now keyword here is whenever you face trials of many kinds not if you face trials of many kinds and i think many of you watching this can agree that we've all been through some pretty hard trials or suffering in our lives nowadays people call it trauma but a lot of us have been through some difficult times or things that really stress us out or test us it doesn't say you know except for those who follow everything that the bible says or except for those who donate a bajillion dollars then you're exempt from trials no it says whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Now, I already have read this multiple times, so I know that the word perseverance, or in my Bible it says steadfastness, it's repeated multiple times. So you wanna look out for words that are repeated because that means it's emphasizing. <laughs> because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Many times when we go through trials in our lives, my initial reaction is to worry or to cry but that's also a great wake up call to me to realize where is my heart in this am i trusting in the lord or am i trusting in myself in comfort and security let perseverance finish its work which basically means the only way through it is through it so that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything what would it feel like to not lack anything where you just feel so secure and so safe knowing there is literally nothing else you need because you lack nothing. James is reminding us that as we persevere through these trials, it actually makes us more and more mature and we get to grow to be more like Christ and eventually feel like we lack nothing because nothing else matters. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. Now, I think this verse can be taken out of context many times and it will be given to you. It's easy to take that verse out of context and say, oh, so if I just ask God for anything, he's a generous God and will just give it to me. In context, what is this talking about? It's talking about wisdom. If you want wisdom, you should ask and he will not withhold from you. It's especially when we're going through hard Hard times his grace is sufficient for us so in context that makes sense but if we're like oh but I want like a brand new car why isn't God giving it to me that's not what the Bible said but when you ask you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind so there's a lot of analogies in the Bible regarding the sea because the sea can be very uneasy it's unpredictable and it feels unstable but can we trust to get in the boat and to cross the sea trusting that the Lord has got us that person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do and I think you know being really grounded in your faith of what do you truly believe because if you're not sure if you believe in God then you're also gonna be very unsure of many decisions in your life because you don't know where you stand believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position so humble circumstances basically another way of saying you know like if you're, if you're financially unstable or maybe in a really difficult job or all of these areas where in society it may feel like, oh, I'm lesser, but you're not. And it says you ought to take pride in your high position, but the rich should take pride in their humiliation since they will pass away like a wild flower. And I think that does not mean wealthy people are not loved by God, but many times in the Bible, it kind of shows really contrast between the wealthy and the poor because many times it's easy for wealthy people to be enticed by riches and things of this world of comfort and pleasure and using their money in, in excessive ways that it's easy to lose sight of eternity and what God wants. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. It's a little sad 
But again, not a knock to those who are wealthy. Just a reminder to stay humble. Blessed is the one who perseveres, that word again, under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. So the crown of life, of course, is heaven. And to withstand the test of time, because, because if you don't withstand the test, when our faith is tested, and if you fail, that means you don't believe anymore, which means you wouldn't go to heaven. So of course, that's what it means by persevering through that. And I just want to remind everybody that actually the Lord is the one who allows us to believe. Because of our sinful nature, we would actually choose sin over God. We prefer sinful, lustful pleasures of this world versus what God desires because that's our sin nature. But the minute that the Lord decides to save us is when our desires start to change because of what Jesus has done on the cross. So when we're talking about faith, it's truly faith that God has given to us as a gift because he is sovereign he is sovereign over our whole life let no one say when he is tempted i'm being tempted by god so when we say testing of your faith that's different from you being tempted by sin because being tempted verse 14 when he is lured and enticed by his own desire it's actually our own sinful desires that lead us into temptation of like i'm gonna go do illegal things or i'm going to lie to my friend or talk behind their back and things like that that's from our own desires so god is not the one testing you in that we are doing it because from our own desires but he is still in control of our lives despite that testing of our faith there are going to be some things that are completely out of our control and those are the moments where if you know okay that that was not me <laughs> then it must be the Lord. And you know what? There's a really hard trials in this world. It's not to say like, oh, we just need to like have faith and get over it. No, there, no, there is grieving, there is sadness, and there's a lot of pain. He promises to restore and to renew and to lead us to the crown of life as we trust him and walk in his steps. 15, then desire when it has conceived gives birth to sin and sin when it is fully grown brings forth death. Do not be deceived my beloved brothers. Every good and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. So that is an example of, of pure steadfastness and why persevering matters. He is constant. He is dependable. That's who we want to serve. The gospel the fact that we are saved not because of our own efforts but because of what Jesus has done and it's truly accepting Jesus into our lives as our Lord and Savior and saying yeah God I am a sinner and there's so many times in my life where I've tried to do, do things my way and I'm done doing it my way I want to do it your way and what your word says is true so, so with all of that I think the application would be to consider it a joy when we face trials of various kinds and I'm going to be honest that's not my first reaction when things are going bad my first reaction is to cry and sometimes ask God why but he doesn't have to tell me why I just need strength to to persevere and to trust okay God I don't know why this is happening and you may never tell me why it's happening but I trust that it is for my good because you are good that he is a good father who likes to give good gifts to his children and a good parent also disciplines in a loving way um when i think back to some of the hardest times of my life sometimes i think dang god like did it really take all of that to get me to mature but he knows us best so i guess so but i hope that this bible study helped you guys on this christmas eve if you like what you see please like and subscribe and i'll see you later